Um, it's Palm Sunday, otherwise known as um, Bring Your Donkey to Work Day. When I was a teenager, we it was right in the middle of the Make Way Marches um, sort of season. And my friend Brian always had a donkey. It was a real donkey. We had to walk from the village hall down to church. And uh, in my mind, Brian, who is not a small man, was riding the donkey. But it might have just been never knowingly underverted. It was, a, it was an extrovert extraordinaire. But he might have just been walking and waving flags and stuff. But we couldn't manage a real donkey today. So we do have for your delight, Ludwig who made his debut um, Palm Sunday a couple of years ago, and Eeyore, who um, replaced an old Eeyore, who, Eeyore, who sadly went to live on a farm. Um, <laughs> and anyone else who's got their donkeys, wave them now. Including Jill's donkey Jill's socks. socks. <laughs> Fantastic people who actually brought donkeys. I'm so glad. I love him. So that's a unicorn, Stuart. <laughs> that's the kangaroo. <laughs> That's an excellent donkey, Adam. Like it, Jeremy. Oh, I'm a very, very pink, Paul. Well that's done. That's <laughs> lovely. I'm not sure that's a donkey. Is that a, you're trying to hide the corn on that unicorn, aren't you, Bethan? <laughs> um, yeah, Sheila's got one. I love this church because there's so many donkeys. You're all crazy, but I love you dearly. Um, so we've got two things to catch up with today. It is Palm Sunday, so obviously that's going to be a big part of our service. But we're also finishing off our uh, Lent programme, which um, it wasn't particularly down for today, but the last item is a star. So we'll be looking at um, one of the times that Jesus prayed as well. But I think we're going to start off, if we've got it right, with um, a song. Um, I hope you noticed the we we decided that was appropriate because it talks about God being king <coughs> and uh, you know Jesus was king, proclaimed king as he rode in on a donkey. So it's totally not tangential and not only because we really like that video. No, no, no. Um, so um, each week in Lent we've been doing a this week in Lent option. Um, we haven't gone down the same road this week, but we would like people to share what they've been doing in Lent. Um, so what I thought we'd do, rather than having a little video from one person, is I'm going to put the whiteboard up. And if people just share on that the sorts of things they've been doing in Lent that are fun, uh, active or taking action, um, engaging with scripture or doing things together um that'd be great so i'm going to attempt it now but you know could go de terribly wrong right i'm going to have a go um the subtitles will disappear um should stop sharing. so um apologies for that but i don't think we can get the whiteboard and the subtitles at the same time Okay, so hopefully now you're seeing the whiteboard and you can start writing on it. Anything you've done that's been fun, um, active or taking action, anything you've learned, any wonderful things God's taught you through scripture or anything you've done together. So you should be able to put your text on or draw or write. Brilliant. Put this on at the same time. Trying to read a book. <laughs> how, do, how do you do it? Um, sorry, I was going to have to do a technical talk, talk through them before. <clears throat> Can you tell that I work with children who are both visually impaired? Because that's a, that's my standard font on this computer. <laughs> Hang on, I'll just make it a bit smaller. Mm. 
<laughs> Never mind. Never mind, I'll just leave it there. <clears throat> Sending the gift, I love that. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm impressed by the people who aren't eating sugary foods and drinks. Well done. Giving things to people. Litter picking's been a big thing. I found God on mute good when I've engaged with it. That's been really good. So thanks for recommending that one, Jill. Brilliant. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so is everybody finishing us finishing off? Okay. Uh, I want to try and take a picture of it. Oh, that will be recorded, won't it? It would be if I'd press record. I'll press record. Oh, you have got them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's save the whiteboard. Well done. There we go. So if I now go back to... So you can screen share now. Okay. Share screen. Share screen. So I kind of hope some of those things will continue after Lent. Um, the litter picking has been brilliant. I think between us we've cleared up quite a lot of streets and, uh, you know, prevented a few crimes possibly. What I'm impressed by is, is Mary's ability to find all the really dodgy items. Well done. Yeah. Okay. Smashing. Okay, so following on, we have our first, I think it should be our first reading. Okay, keep your Bible shut for now. Don't try and um, find this, please, because uh, just because of something that's going to happen next. Um, normally in church, we're saying open your Bibles, but don't <laughs> at the minute. Um, and uh, keep your phones, screens down for a minute, okay? There's no internet searches after this reading. Okay, so our first reading is um, the last one from the Lent series, uh, which are times that Jesus prayed. And that is meant to be a star. The item um, was a star. So it just says, um, it's Luke 6, verse 12. Well done. Uh, and it just says, one of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. We're going to have a bit of a segue, aren't we, Miriam? Well, we were. I was going to talk about um, Jesus prayed all night um, to choose his disciples. He didn't play. He prayed all night before he chose the disciples and um i don't know sometimes you wonder whether he should have prayed a bit longer um they were great in many circumstances <coughs> and they were with him all the time and they heard or were involved in all of the other times that he prayed uh, sometimes they nodded off sometimes they listened carefully sometimes they helped organize things and that's one of the things they did um just before the palm sunday event um they were involved in getting everything ready for the entry into jerusalem so they were good they were bad they were a bit indifferent they were just like us um so we've got a little video now that is um part oh no we've got a reading next <laughs> and then a video sorry um, I've got thrown now by not being able to do my quiz. <laughs> okay, let's go next. I'll do the first part. So, <clears throat> as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, 
while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowd that went ahead of them and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. in them so you could have a look on that uh, for that online if you fancy it we'll perhaps put a link on later um so the challenge then not necessarily now but if you're in the family room you might want to go for it um so the challenge there is uh using only what you've got or what you can find or things from nature um depict the story of jesus riding into jerusalem i'm not expecting it to be like a full animated folk picture but just like a, a single still on, on maybe on a piece of paper, um, but not drawn with crayons, um, made like a collage, but with stuff that's around it. And then when you've done it, um, post pictures to either the WhatsApp family group or the messenger group, and then um, we'll be able to enjoy those this week, uh, running into, well, into Holy Week. Um, if you do them before maybe Thursday, that'd be great, because we're looking at... Um, Monday, Thursday, and the Last Supper and stuff by Thursday. And um, so it'd be quite nice if we could have um, Palm Sunday kind of done by then, I guess. Um, so it'd be great. So you have that, you know, easy example of just finding exactly all the right stones <laughs> to do it with. Um, but you'll see my <clears throat> sand tray later. I, it, I did have an advantage because I've got a teeny tiny wooden, um, I don't know if you can see it, wooden donkey. So that, that is quite helpful if you've got some sort of thing that's already donkey <coughs> shaped. It's a little bit of a cheat. Um, okay, <laughs> move on then, thanks. Okay. So that's your challenge. 
Okay, uh, and so as Jesus uh, entered Jerusalem, obviously the crowds sang and shouted Hosanna. So. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you, hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you, we long for you, cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Worthy 
<clears throat> so this is the bit where you can go and make yourself a nice cup of tea. It's my talky bit. <laughs> so Jesus, we heard at the very beginning, he, he spends all night praying. And then he picks out of his disciples, his followers, he picks out 12 to be apostles. And like Mim said, maybe he should have prayed a bit longer. Because these guys don't often get it 100% right. I do find that um, comforting in a way. You know, these guys are chosen by Jesus to be his messengers, to be you know, the people that will carry the message forward, his, his closest friends, his comrades, his, his confidants and his disappointments, maybe. These are 12 guys from really wide-ranging backgrounds. I mean, just look at, say, look at Simon the Zealot and Matthew the tax collector, a collaborator and a freedom fighter in the same group, picked by Jesus to be his closest friends, his messengers. And these guys, they follow Jesus through three years. They follow him. And they see him do all manner of things. They see the miracles up close. They learn from Jesus' own lips the way of the kingdom. They actually go out and do the works of the kingdom. And yet, they still blow it. And these are the friends that accompany Jesus into Jerusalem, into this triumphal entry. And they must have been thinking, this is it. This is the culmination of the last three years. This is it. This is when Jesus is going to kick out the Romans, when we're going to be liberated. They're going to be part of this crowd shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. This week when I was thinking about this, I was struck just by this question. How many people who on Sunday were shouting Hosanna, 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 swept away by that crowd, were later in the week swept away by another crowd shouting Barabbas, Barabbas, we want Barabbas. Not a comfy question. I suppose Jesus' followers, at least they didn't shout Barabbas, but certainly that week they really kind of let him down i mean what kind of friends are they can't they can't even stay awake during a night of prayer in gethsemane and when the chips are down despite the fact that some of them swore they'd never leave they run away despite the fact that one of them says he'll never ever disown jesus he manages to do it three times before daybreak what kind of friends what kind of followers are these I'd say pretty normal, just like us, people that fail regularly, people that try the best, people that get it wrong anyway. But for me, the fallibility, whilst it's comforting, while their ordinary humanity, their ability to make mistakes is comforting because I see myself in that, that isn't the point. The point is that Jesus sees all that, recognises all that, and still chooses them. After getting stuff wrong, after wanting to call down fire from heaven on a village, after failing to walk on water, after trying to build a shelter at the Transfiguration, after just not getting the amount of stuff that Jesus is trying to teach them, after running away and after deserting him, Jesus still chooses them. And I think it's precisely because they're not perfect that he chooses them. Jesus chooses the imperfect. He chooses us. We're going to go into uh, breakout rooms and here's some questions for you to consider. When have you been shouting Hosanna one moment only to find yourself shouting Barabbas the next? You can imagine being part of that crowd when Jesus is coming in 
to Jerusalem and being, what, what's going on here? Why are they all screaming and shouting for this guy? What's, what's this Hosanna business about? Have you ever been confused or bemused by other people's way of worship? But what I'd mostly like you to do is pray for each other for the times when you've blown it as a friend and as a disciple. And understand that despite, and maybe even because of that, you're not disqualified from being a follower of Jesus because Jesus chose you. Miriam's going to put us into breakout rooms now. Enjoy your time together and we'll see you back here in about 20 minutes. God bless. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you back. Sorry about the uh, confusion there with timings and stuff. I trust you got our message. We've had some technical difficulties with the interwoven account this morning. So sorry. Any road? Uh, yeah, I hope that you were you found those kind of questions and ideas useful in your breakout rooms. Uh, I think before we kind of do the the highlight of the day, which is obviously church notices, uh, what we'll do is we'll have another song.
So let us pray together. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we remember the events of the day that we know as Palm Sunday, when you rode into Jerusalem with your friends and admirers around you, help us to imagine how it might have been and to consider some of the faces in the crowd. People were starting to gather to celebrate Passover in the Holy City. I wonder if some of these people were just like us, looking for a bit of excitement after a time of dullness or difficulty. Quietly, in your heart and mind, remember to God any times of dullness or trouble that you are experiencing at the moment. Think about where you're looking for excitement and the things you're hoping for in the near future. I wonder if there were people working Perhaps they were serving food, or perhaps the owner of the donkeys had come to keep an eye on them and brought the family to the city for a bit of a day out. And here is Jesus, right in the centre, with the crowd shouting Hosanna. Jesus, the star of the show, the servant king, riding in to cheers of applause. But I wonder, I wonder how many kept on cheering. How many of them, just a few days later, stopped cheering for Jesus and started cheering for Barabbas instead. And I wonder how many of us would have done the same.
And in this crowd were lots of Jesus' friends. The ones full of good intentions, just like us. The ones with their own agendas, just like us. The ones who have no idea what they are doing, just like us. Give to God now all your good intentions, your agendas and your confusion. Lay down your plans at Jesus' feet. Take comfort that, in that crowd, throwing all they had to Jesus to use as he wanted, were his best friends who had been specially chosen. Jesus had prayed all night before he chose them. They had worked with him for three years and still they were going to be confused, push their own agenda and betray, run away and abandon Jesus in just a few days time. But God still rode ahead of them and loved them as God walks with us and loves us. As Jesus travels with us, take some time to give thanks for God's faithfulness to us who are so often unfaithful. Amen. Okay, so um, I hope you enjoyed and um, learned uh, and um, enjoyed spending time together and enjoyed spending time with God this morning. Um, we are at the pinnacle of the service now uh, into the notices. Um, I'd just like to remind you that our Lent meetings um, at seven o'clock this week will be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Um, so obviously come to as many of those as you want to. Um, we'd love to see you there. We'll carry on following the uh, God on mute, God unmute. Um, series that we've been doing. So that's seven o'clock weekday evenings from Wednesday. And um, Jill's just, well, I've just got to try and spotlight you, Jill. I don't know if I can do it. Uh, Jill's going to give us a notice. Okay, um, yeah, just renew well-being. Um, at our last uh, leadership meeting, we discussed this and decided uh, we'd pursue this further as a possible venture for us as interwoven. Um, I have put a little video out with some information about it. For, the, for those of you who haven't seen that, uh, Renew Wellbeing is about having uh, a space that you use in the community uh, where there's both a prayer space that people are able to use and a social space where people can um, do various activities uh, as well as connecting um, to get support for their mental health through appropriate support services. Um, so there's there's information about that that I'll post afterwards. And um, one of the ways that we can pursue uh, finding out more about that is through this book, which is called um, Show Up, Slow Down, Show Up and Pray. And it's called Simple Shared Habits to Renew Wellbeing in Our Local Communities. Um, so the big church reader using that um, and we can read through that book and discuss that um, as a community to find out more. If you're interested, uh, please watch the videos. I'm, I'm going to post a video I've done and Renew Wellbeing, of, I've just discovered, I've done a video. Um, they're both about five minutes, so you might want to get a brew and sit and look at them. Um, but it's just a way uh, that we, as a community, um, I love that line in the House Fire song about uh, lead us in your love to those around us. And it's a way in which we could do that uh, as a community. So it would be a... Um, a, quite a, a big step if we did decide to do this uh, but have a look at that and please let me know uh, if you're interested in finding out more and 
and maybe doing the book read as well. Um, uh, I'll post it after Julie. Um, and uh, just to say as well, next week, Easter Sunday, uh, which Paul and I are doing, uh, we will put that as an uh, invitational uh, service. So if you want to invite family or friends to come along, it'd be really great uh, to have uh, some guests with us. Uh, we'll have percussion again and some other um, fun things as we celebrate Easter. OK, thanks very much. Thank you, Jill. I've got you on spotlight. I can't see anyone else now on spotlight. We need to get to Stuart, but I've completely lost everyone. <laughs> um, so I've just got Paul now on spotlight. So, Stu, do you want to go ahead and I will attempt to uh, spotlight yeah, you? No problem at all. Okie dokie. So, yeah, despite numerous uh, desperate requests for us to stop, begging letters saying, please, no more, uh, death threats, uh, dead chickens nailed to our door, etc., etc. We are doing another interwoven quiz, um, this time in aid of charity. It's for the Tia Fund. Uh, it's on Easter Monday. It's 7 p.m. Um, it's a lockdown bank holiday Monday. So unless you'd rather be in a Turkish prison or you'd rather set your teeth on fire, you've got no excuse uh, not to come. Um, book on the website if you can. Uh, that would be great. It just gives us a better indication of how many is coming or just put a notice on the WhatsApp saying you'd love to come. Um, and it is for tier fun. So the more people that do come in the way of guests, friends, relatives, etc., uh, the more fun we'll have and the more money we will raise. So that's Easter Monday, bank holiday, 7 p.m. Please come. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, come with the last slide, please, Paul. So that's all our notices. We're just going to have a quick closing prayer and then there will be a blessing that we can stay all together, but please keep on mute because um, there's too much lag otherwise. It's a shame. It would be lovely to say it all together and hear all our voices, but um, God can hear all our voices. Um, okay, so I'll just quickly pray. Father, I thank you that um, we go through times of excitement and joy times of seriousness, and that you are with us in our troubles. Father, I thank you for the communities and friends that we travel through life with. And I pray that you will keep us uh, loyal and trusting, and that you will allow us to make mistakes, uh, knowing that you still love us. And I pray that you will help us to forgive one another when the mistakes are against us and to apologize quickly when we make mistakes towards others. Father, I just thank you for this brilliant community of Interwoven. Um, I thank you for all the people who brought donkeys, all the people who shared things over Lent, all the people who are going to be sharing pictures. I thank you that together we bring each other joy and point each other towards you. Amen. Okay, so if we can say this blessing together to end our service. May, may the, the peace, peace of the Lord Christ, Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Amen. I think we're all looking forward to the time when we can be in the same inside the same doors together and um, hopefully it won't be too much longer and um, so thank you for coming this morning um, it's been lovely to see everybody we will um, keep the meeting open for a little while so if people want to unmute and chat that's absolutely fine or if you want to go and get a snack or go and have a rest or whatever you're going to do this afternoon that's also fine okay so thanks for coming see you soon Stop <laughs>